Hi there, everybody. Um, you may have noticed I'm looking a little different today. Uh, today's a very special day in the Empire uh, because it was exactly nine years ago today that I first took to the streets portraying the character that I portray <clears throat> every day for this vlog, but also for uh, tours. And we'll talk about that in a little while. Uh, Joshua Abraham Norton, Norton the First, Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico. And we'll, we'll get back to, to him a little bit later on. But today is the ninth anniversary of my first tour. And uh, I'll be putting up a few pictures here to show you what it looked like back then. Uh, it was a very beautiful day, had a few friends along, but I had a job at that time that did not allow me to grow my hair or have a real beard. So for about the first few months of the tour, um, I had to wear a fake beard, which I was always fearing would fall off and actually did once. That was kind of interesting. So what led us to this point? What, how did this all get started? Um, first of all, a little bit of background about me. Uh, this is a part I call Who Am Us Anyway, which is a quote from the Firesign Theater. Uh, big influence on me as were the Marx Brothers and the Credibility Gap and the Three Stooges and Monty Python's Flying Circus, which is why you, why you often see references, vague references, I don't actually come out and say it, to these very things in the vlog. Uh, I like to le keep things kind of obscure, and uh, we'll also get to that in a little bit as well. So my real name is Joseph. Um, I know some of you probably already know that. And I am currently a tour guide, but I've done a lot of things in my 64 years, 64 and a half now. I uh, started off as a cook, which is why I also do food tours, but we'll get to that. Uh, then, let's see, I was a picture framer, a manager of retail art supply stores, managed a thrift store for about five years in Laguna Beach. That was fun. And uh, then I moved into journalism, kind of an unexpected career change, but very rewarding. I did that for mm, about 15 years as well. Was editor of a couple of LGBT publications in Southern California, which is where I was born and raised. I'm not a native San Franciscan. Many people uh, think that I am because of my knowledge of the city, but I'm not. I'm not a native of Southern California, but I love San Francisco. Well. Anyway, the um, journalism jobs dried up with the rise of the internet around the year 2000. And so I found myself either unemployed or underemployed. Uh, I was working for a while for Project Open Hand, a wonderful organization here in the Bay Area. It was a great job, it didn't pay very much. Benefits were great. Then moved over to a job working at a grocery store and really didn't like that very much. It was around this time that the uh, genesis of the tours uh, came about. And, uh, well, let's move on to that for a moment. Because it was about 10 years ago, maybe a little bit more than that, that uh, the Countess and I, you know, the Countess is always on on a Saturday vlog. There she is right there. And in case you don't know, and I, in case you haven't been able to figure out, the Countess and I are a married couple. Uh, we've been married for about, I think, four years now. Been together for about 11. Uh, couldn't get legally married until about four years ago, you know. So we um, we took a tour. And I won't say what the tour was, but I will say this. It wasn't very good. And the tour guide made some things up that were just not necessary to make up. And we both looked at each other at the end and said, you know what, I think we can do better than this. And so that's what we set about to doing. We were originally going to do uh, custom tours, uh, have a van and, uh, excuse me, a piece of my beard got in my mouth. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, so we thought about doing these custom tours where we would have people contact us, let us know what they were interested in, and then we would build a van tour around that. Well, there's a lot of logistics involved with that, and uh, the Countess ended up doing something else. And so I was kind of stuck thinking, well, I'm not really liking what I'm doing right now. And I'd like to be a tour guide. It seems like something that I would be 
well suited to do. I have had a interest in history, especially California history since uh, my youth, thanks very much to my father for that. And I have experience as a writer, in case you can't tell, I have experience as a performer. I was a theater major, didn't do much with it, uh, but still, you know, once a ham, always a ham. I've been putting on shows since I was a, just a little child, puppet shows, and then always did show and tell, and just always like to tell people about things. So I thought, okay, I'll put together this walking tour. And I thought, well, what can I do that draws upon my experience as an actor? So I thought, well, I could do something really different and do it as a character from San Francisco history. We both thought this would be good because the Countess and I both have a performance backgrounds. So the Countess pretty early settled on Lola Montez but I wasn't sure who I wanted to be. And initially I thought it was going to be Mark Twain, uh, which is a good choice because he was here for a time, but he really isn't associated you know, tremendously with San Francisco. He had a whole career beyond here. This is where he got started. Um, there's a reasonable resemblance underneath this beard to Mark Twain. But the more I thought about it, the less sense it made. And so in doing my research, I had been vaguely aware of who Emperor Norton was, and I'll give you the elevator speech about him in just a little bit, but didn't really know that much. And then I picked up uh, one of his biographies, uh, a very good one uh, by William Drury, and I'll try to put a picture of it up here if you uh, ever find a copy. It's also available online for free. I'll try to put the link for that here as well uh, so that maybe you can look it up because it's a very good biography. And as I was reading this, it was almost like an epiphany, like a bolt of lightning hit me saying, well, this is who you should be. Um, and it made a lot of sense. I, I bear something of a physical resemblance. Uh, let's see, where's a picture of the real guy? Well, here's one right here. Uh, you can see there's a somewhat similarity. I don't know how well you can see that, but look up some pictures online. I'll put a nice one here where we're kind of looking alike. Um, and he was very flamboyant and was very important to San Francisco history. So I thought this was who I should be. And so the Countess uh, made me a, a very early uniform, which I think you'll see in the pictures from the first tour. And then later on got me the, uh, the first coat that I wore for about six years. That wore out. It was almost gray and in tatters. It is in tatters. I still have it. And so crowdfunded the second one. These are these uniforms are handmade in Pennsylvania for Civil War reenactors. And it's actually the same coat that he wore, same style coat, not the coat. Um, and um, took to the streets and wow, what an adventure it's been. Never thought when this started that, that it would take me to the places that it's taken me to and allowed me to do the things that I have done. In those years, the Countess and I have become an important part of the San Francisco history community, given lots of talks and lectures, been out on the street three days a week uh, doing my own tours. I'll talk about the other tours I do as well in a little bit. And uh, just adulation and love from the people of San Francisco. There was a real hunger to have the emperor back among them again and I am greeted as the emperor constantly when I'm out and about and uh, giving the tours. So that's been wonderful. Uh, become something of a, I would say, a D-list celebrity in this city, which is kind of a dream come true. Uh, that's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's always interesting to see how people react to me when I'm out dressed as the emperor, because especially in the financial district where I'm seen a lot, you know, two days a week, sometimes three, uh, people come to expect to see me there and greet me all the time. One of my favorite reviews, by the way, I'm very proud of the reviews what the Countess and I get. We are both five-star tour guides on TripAdvisor, get a certificate of excellence every year, uh, have had virtually no negative reviews. So where was he? Oh yes, the TripAdvisor review that's my favorite said that it's really fun to walk behind me when I'm out dressed as the emperor and people either uh, acknowledge who I am or look away in horror. Oh, I love that. I just love that. So that's been great. I've met virtually every former mayor and current 
of San Francisco. I haven't met London Breed yet. I haven't met Gavin Newsom, but I think pretty much all the others. Uh, met Willie Brown on a number of occasions. Um, as I think I'll throw that picture up there too. You know, there is a little bit of bad blood between Emperor Norton and uh, Emperor Norton fans and Willie Brown because of the naming of the Bay Bridge. Uh, the Willie Brown Bridge, uh, I bear him no personal animosity and he's always been very nice and warm to me. Whenever we run into each other in public, I've met uh, had former Mayor Art Agnos on my tour one day, met John Cleese, there, there he is right there, uh, one of my favorite actors as well, uh, Leslie Jordan, uh, brother boy from Sordid Lives. Uh, that's quite a story I don't have time to go into, but that was a lot of fun. So it's just been a blast. Uh, it's been very, very rewarding, both uh, personally and, well, somewhat financially. It's uh, doing the tours are not enough to provide me a full-time income. So I uh, had another job, past tense, because none of us are working right now. Uh, about six or nine months into giving the tours, I uh, had my first real Emperor Norton freak. I would call that, and that's not in a derogatory way. On the tour, her name's Caitlin, and I'll try to put up a picture of the vlog that she and I did. She had a short-lived series called Overland Monthly, and I was her first, I think only show actually, she might have done a second one, where we just went out and walked around with me dressed up as the Emperor and interacting with people, and she spliced it together into a wonderful, wonderful vlog. Uh, there's a link for it on my website, EmperorNortonTour.com. Uh, we also have a website for the tours in general, SFTimeMachine.com. You can access everything there. So anyway, uh, she said, you know what, you shouldn't be doing that bad job that you've got. You need to be a full-time tour guide. Well, that's when she got me a job on one of those double-deck open-top tour buses, big bus. And that was, that's been a lot of fun. It's very different from the tours that I do as the Emperor, but uh, rewarding. Get to meet people from all over the world, and wow, I hope I get to do it again someday. Hope I get to be uh, the Emperor doing tours again someday, because the pandemic, of course, has um, forced all of us to uh, basically be out of business at the moment. Luckily, unemployment benefits have been fairly good because of that extra $600 a week uh, that the federal government kicked in. That's running out at the end of the month, so don't really know what I'm going to do after that, looking for some voiceover work. We'll see, but it's just been the experience of a lifetime, and I appreciate everybody who tunes in every day. I appreciate everybody who's ever taken the tour. Thousands of people have taken the tour in the last nine years, and uh, hope a lot of them tune in. I wish more did. So how did this vlog come together? Uh, I've done, what, 92 episodes counting today. So mm, about a week or two into the pandemic, you know, we went into shutdown mode here around mid-March and was just sort of sitting at home, not much to do, feeling sorry for myself, bored out of my skull. So we thought, well, what can I do? So we came up with this idea for the vlog. Now, it didn't start off in the format that it's in now where I do this day in history, all that stuff. Um, it really just started off in our in our backyard, uh, which is when I'm outside, that's where we're vlogging from. And I thought I would just sit down and talk about some of the considerable stupidity that's going on around this pandemic of people thinking that it's fake or not wanting to wear their masks, or not observing social distancing, taking unproven cures that the idiot in the White House uh, thought would work. Um, things like that, excuse my calling him that, but in case you can't tell, there is no love lost between me and Donald Trump. Um, but anyway, I digress. So I did about a four minute vlog on that, put it up, got a few viewers and thought, well, that's fun. So I started working more on doing that sort of thing. Maybe sh I did one where I showed you around the garden uh, with our upstairs neighbor who uh, maintains a lot of the garden. And then started thinking, well, how am I going to sustain this? I never really thought this was going to be a daily thing. So that's when I started doing this day in history, starting off with the San Francisco story, other things in history, births, deaths, since I've added uh, national days and the Florida man segment, this day in Florida man. 
And so now these vlogs end up running about 12 to 20 minutes. This one's going to go about that long. So I shoot in the mornings, usually before 11, uh, down here in the uh, studio. Studio A, as I refer to this, or outside if there's not too much wind, but we get a lot of wind here. So maybe days when you haven't been able to hear me as well, that's when we're outside. And then after about the first maybe 15 or 20, started looking into video editing apps, and that's why you see the picture in picture of uh, better music. Uh, the music used to be having my iPad next to me playing music, very low tech, invested in better microphones as this went along, things like that to try to make it a better vlog. And I'll basically keep doing it as long as I can, at least as long as we're under lockdown. Uh, unless I get some work, I may have to cut back a little bit on the schedule. If I do that, I'll let you all know. I may start doing it just a couple days a week. We'll see. It, it, this takes me, with the pictures, the editing, the music and everything, this takes me about three hours a day to put together, which is fine because I really have nothing else to do. Uh, so it's not a big deal. So what's the future? Well, none of us know. Uh, we never know the future, of course. Uh, that's why we talk so much about the past. And so, um, I don't know, I'm going to keep doing it. I need to find work uh, by the end of the month. I need to start getting some more income coming in. I'm uh, getting listed on a voiceover website. I'm hoping to pick up some work doing that, maybe writing. I really would like to do sleep stories and things like that. Uh, cartoon voices is something that I've always been interested in doing. Voiceover work, I've actually done some uh, for a couple of film trailers, one documentary. Things like that, in case you can't tell, I have a pretty decent, well-trained voice. And so, if you know of anything out there, please send it my way. EmperorNortonTour at gmail.com if you want to communicate. I would love to pick up some more voiceover work because it's really a lifelong dream, and I think this is all about fulfilling those dreams at this point in my life. Um, so I think that's pretty much all for me and tour and the vlog and how all this came together. Um, so I want to talk about the other tours as well that are all under the SF Time Machine banner. So we, of course we have Emperor Norton's fantastic San Francisco Time Machine, which is the tour that started nine years ago today. And then I have a culinary background, as I said earlier, so that's when San Francisco Food Safari launched about seven years ago, maybe eight first with a North Beach tour and then with a Mission District tour. And then I decided to do an Emperor Norton waterfront tour, which is a lot of fun. I would do that one, I would do that one every other Sunday when I'm out touring. So that's all on the website. You can check that out. And the Countess's tour is called Drag Me Along Tours. I think you get the joke. And uh, she does a wonderful tour of the Barbary Coast Chinatown, adults only. And that one was every other Sunday. We are really looking forward to doing this again, but we are not going to do it until it is considered safe. We're not gonna take any unnecessary risks. We encourage you to follow the same mindset. So who was Joshua Norton? Well, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of costume change while we discuss that. Uh, Joshua Abraham Norton. He was born in London, uh, the East End, Deptford, in 1818. When he's about two years old, his family moves to South Africa. Uh, he comes to San Francisco in 1849. He's got some money, about $40,000, which was a pretty fair amount of money back then. Not bad whatsoever. But he wants more money. He's a very successful businessman. They called him the emperor even then because he was an empire builder. He turned his uh, $40,000 into $250,000 in just four years by investing in things like commodities, had a rice mill, cigar factory, property, that sort of thing. And uh, that by the way, so he turned it into $250,000. That's about $10 million today. But then he wanted more money, tried to corner the market on rice, which made sense at the time. Don't have time to go into the details on that. Um, but the scheme didn't work. And he lost not only his own money, but other people's money. 
uh, leveraged his properties, years of lawsuits, uh, left him shamed, bankrupt, broken, and forgotten. He would disappear for a couple of years and then would reemerge in San Francisco on the 17th of September, 1859, walked into one of the local newspapers, hands the editor a proclamation declaring himself the Emperor of the United States. Well, you know, if that happened in the other city, they'd laugh about a town, but this newspaper printed it out of the headline, Have We an Emperor Among Us? And then he became Norton I, Emperor of the United States, would later add the title Protector of Mexico. Reasons for that we have discussed in other vlogs. Uh, don't have time to go into that. And, well, like I said, instead of locking him up, everybody in San Francisco thought, well, that's a good idea, and went along with this for 21 years. Uh, he would eat for free in restaurants, would have the best seats in the theater. Oops, sorry. People would rise in his honor. The police saluted him. Businesses wanted his endorsement. He rode transit for free and even printed his own imperial treasury bonds. Some say it was his own money, but actually they were promissory notes due and payable. Uh, of course, they never were paid. Um, and they were accepted as legal tender whenever he presented them anywhere in the city. Uh, he had the run of the city and then came up with ideas people honestly thought were a little bit odd at the time, but he was a visionary. And sometimes a little bit of madness makes a great visionary, they say. And that is one of the questions, of course. Was he truly mad? Well, we don't know. Was he crazy or crazy like a fox? Who knows? I like to think it's a combination of the of both, that he was a little bit off, probably. Maybe had some delusions. Um, he was perfectly sane about everything, except if you questioned him being emperor. But he also knew he had a good deal going, he didn't have to pay for much, except his boarding house room. And even that may have been paid for by the Masons, we don't know for sure. But he did quite well, so he thought, why not? Let's keep this going. And so he did for 21 years. Uh, among his ideas, well, the United Nations, the San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge, which by all rights should be named the Emperor Norton Bridge. Sorry, Willie. Um, all sorts of things like that. Uh, he was a great champion of human rights, sticking up for uh, the oppressed, the Chinese, African Americans, Native Americans, early advocate of the vote for women. He was a great humanitarian, which is maybe one of the reasons why we still, sorry, epaulets don't look good, still love him to this day. So as I said, he has a long and prosperous reign of 21 years, passes away January 8, 1880, and they have this huge funeral for him. Uh, that said 30, well, some estimates say as low as 3,000 to 30,000, uh, pay their last respects when his body's laying in state. His funeral procession, they say, was over two miles long. It is estimated that uh, well, anywhere from 40,000 to 250,000 people um, lined the route to the cemetery. Um, he, was, you know, he was buried in San Francisco, but moved. they moved into Colma, a city south of here. They basically moved everybody, including the emperor. In 1934, he was reburied in Colma with uh, 21 gun salute, full military rights, and he's there still to this day. Uh, his grave is visited twice a year, at least, by, uh, uh, first of all, an organization known as the Ancient and Honorable Order of E. Clampus Vitus, What Say the Brethren. I'm a member of that myself. We'll do a whole episode on that someday. He's also visited by a uh, local drag organization called the Imperial Court. Uh, too much to go into right now as well. We will devote an episode to that someday as well when something important comes up about them. It's quite a sight to see when there's a gathering that's great. If you've never been there, I would encourage you to go. Uh, it's a beautiful tombstone um, and very moving to be there. I try to show up before there's a gathering to make sure that everything looks ship shape and uh, all that. So um, anyway, that's the story of the Emperor and uh, that's my story. So perhaps now it's time to <clears throat> put back on the hat and assume the characters. So welcome, one and all, 
to Emperor Norton's fantastic history vlog. Today is July 10th, 2020. This is episode 92. It is our 115th day under COVID-19 restrictions here in San Francisco. And with that, we want to wrap up. We wish you all the best. Stay safe. Stay inside. If you go outside, wear a damn mask. Don't take unproven cures. Be kind to one another. Until we see you again, a gracious good day.